I believe I had a dogman encounter a few months back, right when the quarantine started happening. I was going to take my woman out on a date night since we hadn't gotten to do anything right when the quarantine hit. So, I took her out for a night to go look out at the stars. It was late April, early May, so things were beginning to warm up, just a pinch, which meant that nighttime wouldn't be freezing cold anymore. She and I got in my truck, packed a couple of blankets, and set sail for about 20 minutes away, closer to the mountain where there's a larger meadow that I'd been thinking about laying in and watching the stars with her. We pulled off to the side of the road, got flashlights, and made our way out to the middle of this large meadow and laid our blankets down. It was a tad chilly, but not too bad. We wore light jackets and we had a blanket to cover us up, so we were okay to snuggle and watch the skies together. The night was actually pretty clear. We could see all the stars and everything perfectly. Now, I want to lay this out for you so you have a better picture of my entire situation. The truck is about 100 feet away, give or take, in our view. We're in a large open meadow with very tall grass and there are no woods around us that are necessarily close. We felt very safe and comfortable. The night was quiet, only the low hum of crickets, so we didn't really notice anything going awry at first listen. My girlfriend started acting funny after a while before she sat up, acting all sorts of paranoid and looking around. I asked her, what, you freak the cops are going to show up and bust us? She tells me to shh, and we both listen closely. We can hear something big moving slowly in the grass close by. It would be a slight shuffling noise and then stop. Then it would start up again and then stop. We're both looking at one another, mouthing, what animal is that? It sounded really big. I continued lying there, listening closely while my girlfriend was trying to be as sly as possible and still look out the night if she could see anything but she couldn't. Whatever was shuffling and making moving noise in the grass had been getting closer and closer to us, inch by inch. I can't say exactly how close or how far away it got, but it felt like it was getting too close for comfort. When you start to feel in danger like that, you just can't help but let your mind race to things like a possible serial killer coming to hurt you, or maybe some sort of crazed rapist I know that's a bit drastic, but there's no reason for anybody should be out here in the meadow at 10.30 at night. There's nothing out here, which is why in my mind, it was the perfect spot for a little date with the woman. Well, I would soon learn that it was not a person like I had initially thought. My girlfriend began staring off, telling me that she thinks she could see something, and she asked me to sit up and look. So, I slowly sit up, and I look in the direction that she's pointing at, and all I could see and make out is the tips of these taller ears. I need to tell you though, that even though it was nighttime, and it being 10.30 at night, the sky was clear enough, and with nearly a full moon. That's relevant because there's plenty of light from the moon, enough to see as clear as the day, and these tall perky ears, maybe about 30 feet away in the grass. We didn't know exactly what we were looking at, and then all of a sudden, this head pops out of the tall grass, looking directly at us. I had to cover my mouth, but my girlfriend just starts screaming frantically. What I saw, I will confidently say that there is no animal out there that looks like this, or should look like this. It was not natural, to say the least. The best way I'll describe it, and how this thing looked, was a devilish looking hyena. Its face was pulled back almost contorted, but it really resembled that of a Botox hyena. From what I can tell in the low lighting conditions, it was a dark gray, and it faded to a lighter gray. Again, the stars and nearly full moon provided enough light that we can see initial details. It opened its mouth, and it was full of triangular shaped teeth that came to a very fine point. It had these eyes that glowed to a bright yellow that almost resembled eyes if you were to shine a light into them, except there's no light being shined into them. What made my mind even go more towards the hyena option 
is that it seemed to have a pure and huge evil grin on its face. I know that might sound hokey, but I'm being real with you here. There's no mistaking that whatever this creature was staring right back at us, within a second, it opened its mouth and showed its teeth, all while maintaining its grin. Quickly, I ducked back down, thinking smart, and pulled my girlfriend down with me. I grabbed her head close to mine, and I whispered in her ear, When I tell you to run, you need to run. I changed positions at the runner's stance and got ready to bolt for the truck. Screw the blankets, I had a flashlight in my hand and that's all we needed. I turned my head towards her, and I whispered, Run! Her and I took off running faster than we ever have towards the truck. Not even a second goes by, and that thing that we saw begins the chase. How do I know this? Because I heard this huge trampling sound behind us in the grass, and it was closing in on us very, very quickly. As it was trampling through the grass, I could hear even more and more just how incredibly massive this animal was. And in that moment, I'm telling my girlfriend to run and actually reaching my truck. I don't think I was thinking much of anything other than trying to survive in that moment. This thing sounded heavy. With each trample, you could hear the thud and feel the thuds in the ground. When you're in a fear like that and you're in the moment, there really is no thought process. You're running on pure adrenaline and emotion. Fear will drive you to do great things, and in this case, it drove me and her to survive. As I'm recalling it, I can give you more vivid details because it's something I will never forget. It's an experience that will haunt me and my girlfriend for the rest of our lives, probably. Unless we undergo some sort of trauma therapy and are able to get over it, but please, what therapist is going to take us seriously? That's just not an option. Neither my girlfriend nor I am what you would call a runner by any means. Neither of us are sports people, and I did not do anything close to track in high school. I am not a fat, lazy slouch either, but I should not be able to clear 100 feet in that short amount of time as I did. I had attributed all of that to sheer adrenaline, and surprisingly, my girlfriend was able to keep up. I'm very thankful that I did not lock my truck that night. I usually do, but I must have forgotten, and so we hop right in the truck, and I didn't even bother once looking back. Like clockwork, and somehow in that crazy chaotic situation, having total control, I hopped right in the driver's side, slammed the key into the ignition, and I floored it. No seatbelt, nothing. There was no time. I don't know if whatever animal this was is trying to kill us, or if it was just trying to chase us off, or what its intent clearly was. This animal was much larger than us and faster, and I honestly believe in my heart of hearts that if it wanted to clear the distance entirely between me and my girlfriend, it could have very easily. But no, it stayed very close behind us at an even length and even let us get into my truck and leave, but it did not try once to attack us. Once we reached my truck, I never looked back to see if it was there or how close this was. Thinking back, I can just imagine it reaching out and trying to grab one of us, and I'm thankful that that did not happen. Was it clearly a bluff charge? Was it just trying to run us off the meadow? I don't know. What I can tell you is what was supposed to be a romantic date with my woman watching the stars in a peaceful nature meadow was ruined forever. That will forever be a haunting memory, constantly reoccurring. I know when most people send you stories, they try and answer all the who, what, when, where, and why, but I don't really have any of that, and I'm sorry for that. I wish I could tell you where it came from, or if it was maybe there before we even got down to the spot. Was it hiding in the grass the entire time, or perhaps did it sneak up on us without us knowing? I still wonder what its true intentions were, and had my girlfriend not sat up and seen it, how close would it have gotten without us ever knowing? I don't even want to go there and think about that, because it's just too scary. For me, I feel like talking about it and even typing it out is therapeutic and helps me through it. It's a very scary recount for me. My girlfriend refuses to talk about it at all. Anytime I bring it up, 
she's quick to change the subject and won't even acknowledge that it ever happened. I haven't tried once to invite her out on a date that involves going out anywhere near a meadow or watching stars. Maybe again in the future, in the bed of my truck at her parents' driveway. But I think it's going to take some time before we can do something like that and not feel completely on edge. My girlfriend and I are not paranoid people to begin with. I feel like it was our gut instinct telling us something was wrong. Even though initially, I never felt anything wrong. It was my girlfriend who told me that she felt something was wrong, which is why she stood up initially and started looking around. Thank goodness for her instinct, man. I believe it saved both of us. Had it just been me, we would both be dead. I guess for now, I'll just call it a wild hyena creature, because that's the only thing I know what to call it. I don't know if you've ever heard of creatures like this, and I'm really sorry for turning this email into a mini novella, but the more information I can give you, the more I feel better about it. Feel free to read this to your audience if you want. Maybe they might know what happened upon us that very night. <laughs>